If you guys are trying to save money and you don't want to buy professionally made racks, I'm going to show you how to make your own snake rack or reptile rack. It's super, super easy and I don't want you guys to get ripped off anymore. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this amazing rack build. Hey guys, welcome to another video here at Cloud Colubrids. This is gonna be an amazing video. We're gonna be building a new rack for the snakes. I'm always excited about building these racks. It's so much fun. And the best part is when you're done, you get a feeling like, wow, I actually built this to my exact specifications. I didn't have to rely on a company to build one for me. I did it on my own and I have the exact specifications I need for what works for me. Now, this is gonna be a long video, so grab a cup of coffee. It's getting cold outside, so grab a cup of coffee or whatever you like, it's your choice. All right, so I got my PVC right here. This is half inch foam black PVC. Now, you could use melamine wood if you wanted to save some money or if you're on a budget, it'll be half the price, probably less than half the price. The pros to using PVC, it's lightweight. So when you build the rack, it'll be very easy to move. A wooden rack is very heavy. So that's something to consider. Something else, these are very easy to clean. You could spray them down with whatever solution you want. Wipe them down and they're clean like that. With the wood, they're more um, porous, so they absorb whatever you're spraying on it. When you wipe it down, it's just a lot harder to clean and it can harvest all types of parasites. But don't be discouraged to use wood because if you just keep it as clean as you can, most people never have many issues with wood. But PVC is what I'm using today. I order my PVC from Piedmont Plastics. They have a bunch of them across the country. Or you could just look on Google, whoever sells and cuts PVC locally to you because I don't trust myself cutting PVC to have snakes, it has to be perfect. And basically I make my order, send an email to Piedmont Plastics, they send me a bill, I pay it, and a week later or two weeks later I go to the warehouse, pick up my PVC, they give me an invoice, the PVC comes out on a pallet, load the car, and it's right here. So this is what I would call a hybrid rack, which means it houses many types of bins, which I'm gonna show you next. You can keep different size snakes all in the same rack, so it's a big space saver. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I measure the bins to determine the size of each shelf and the size of the whole rack before putting in my order for PVC. These racks, the first time I ever built one, I was really nervous. I was scared that I wasn't gonna get it perfect and I might have snakes escape. I almost didn't build it, but I saw some of the prices of the professional racks and it was a no brainer to build my own. So I finally did it and it was the best thing I ever did. Now I have confidence to build racks of any, any size that I want. So it gives you that freedom and it's so easy. So watch this video learn the tricks to build these racks and just enjoy it with me because we're gonna have some fun today. So right here is our PVC. This down here, these are the shelves. All the shelves, all the same size, nice and uniform. These are the two side panels. And right here is gonna be the backing of the rack. So I wanna want show you guys a real quick way how I determine the length of each shelf on these racks. This applies to whatever bin, however many bins you're using. It's the same mathematics. All I do is I count how many, how many of these bins do I want per shelf, figure out which kind of bins I'm using, how many bins do I want per shelf, and then I just put them real close side by side and I measure them. So these came out to exactly 25 inches. So 25 inches and I need a little bit of play, so I add a half an inch. So each shelf comes out to 25 and a half inches, which gives me a little bit of room. You see the little bit of room I have on each bin? Just a little bit. It's not too loose, but it gives you just enough 
to slide the rack, the bin in and out. Now, if I didn't do that and I made the shelf exactly the same length as these bins, which would have been 25 inches, it would be really hard to pull these in and out. So real quick, I'm gonna show you how we get the depth of these shelves. We already got the length at 25 and a half inches. How do we determine the depth? You measure your bin, these are 18 inches deep. So we made each shelf 20 inches deep, which will give you two inches to play with. Now, if you made these shelves exactly 18 inches deep, your bin will be right there when you push it in. You won't be able to push it in anymore. Sometimes I do leave my bins like this, but with the extra two inches, you could push it all the way back in there. So now if the snake starts pushing at the bin, he'll never get it this far. But if you have the bin all the way out here and he's real strong, he might start pushing this a little bit slowly and then escape. So having it a little bit deeper than the actual size of the bin helps so you could push them back a little bit more. If you didn't want to do that, you could make it the exact depth of the bin, but you would want to probably put a stopper here just to make sure the snake can't push the bin out. I've never had that issue, but I've heard it happen before. So now we want to make sure we have a small space in between the bin and the shelf on each level so you can pull the bin out real smoothly. If you made these shelves the exact height as the bin, it'll be too snug. You won't really be able to pull out the bins or you'll have to force it out. But by giving a little space gap, you provide a little bit of air for your snake, but you wanna make sure it's real thin so they can't escape. And it'll provide just enough to slide the bins in and out. <laughs> this guy wanted to come out. So the bins you could use for this rack are the FB5s or the V15s, same size. Now this one's twice the size as this, the V18 or FB8. And then twice the size of this is the V35S. So they're all the exact same height. So we could keep all of them on the same rack. It's an amazing rack. You could do three types of bins all on one rack. So I wanna show you guys real quick the difference between the Freedom Breeder bin and the Vision bin. This is Freedom Breeder. It comes with the pre-drilled holes so the snakes could get air. You don't have to drill or melt your own holes. It comes with this built-in water cup holder. The water cup plops right in there so the snake can't tip over the water bowl. So I'm about to clean and fill this water bowl up, but I wanna show you now this is the Vision version. This is the V18. I just showed you the Freedom Breeder FB8, and this is the Vision V18, identical size, but it doesn't have the cup holder built in. So, you know, he could tip this over, but luckily I don't have that problem much. And as you can see, I drilled my own holes. So the Freedom Breeder, I think is a better option, but if you have time to drill holes and you don't mind, a loose water bowl or you want to glue the water bowl and put another one in vision the quality is just as good as the freedom breeder excellent quality but freedom breeder is just a lot easier to work with you don't have to drill holes or worry about water bowls tipping over so up next we're gonna start building this amazing rack I'm gonna also show you what you need to build this rack but first I just want to show you how we determine the height of the rack you gotta measure how tall are your bins. Our bins that we're using today, 3.5 inches tall, we want 12 levels. So 3.5 times 12 gives you the 42 inches. Then you gotta put in consideration the thickness of the PVC for each shelf. It's a half an inch, so half an inch times 14, because we're gonna need 14 pieces. And then we just give an extra five inches or so to play with. We're not given an exact amount because we're gonna have a little bit of excess on the bottom for storage and that's about it. So it's simple as that. So all you're gonna need to build a rack, you're gonna need a hand drill. I got this one for about 30 bucks at Home Depot. It works really well. If you wanna get all fancy, you get one of those cordless ones with a rechargeable battery pack, choice is yours. You're gonna need a quality screw that can go through wood, PVC, metal. So I use the multi-purpose SPAC screw. These are really good quality. And 
Look for a one and a quarter inch. That's a real good size to build these racks. And it comes with a drill bit. So the drill bit comes in the box for free. You're gonna need this for these particular screws. And from Reptile Basics, that's a good place to go and get your heat tape. For about a buck extra per strip, you can have them put on the cord so you don't have to deal with the hassle of putting on the cord. But if you wanna do it yourself, that's cool. You're gonna also need something to provide to provide that little space gap right there. So this is a spacer gap. I got this at Home Depot. It's just a thin piece of plastic. You could also use a flat cardboard box, but we're doing this for hatchling, so we want it to be really thin. Cardboard box is a little bit thicker than this. And then you need your wood or PVC, and that's about it. You're gonna also need a nice freshly brewed cup of coffee to help you push through the build. It takes a while to get these racks put together, but if you have a nice cup of coffee, it'll get done like that. So this is something you definitely wanna have on hand. And we came to the west wing of the, of the house. I have more space here. I need a little bit more space so I can build a rack and record. So we're over here sipping some coffee and we're gonna build right now. So to start things off, we're gonna remove the protective film off of the PVC, and then we're gonna lay the side panel down, lay the base down on the side, and screw it in. I don't have anyone here helping me, so laying it down is the easiest way. And you're gonna put three screws on each side to make sure it's nice and secure. You don't want the base to be wobbly or anything like that and it's nice and freezing outside, so I'm glad you guys are here sipping on some coffee, staying warm, and enjoying this rack build. All right, so now the hardest part is done. Just lining up those pieces. This is gonna be the base of the rack, and that's the hardest part, getting everything nice and straight. You wanna make sure everything is flush, nice and even, and now everything is gonna be easy from this point. Just get the amount of bins you're gonna have per shelf, put them on, and we're gonna start building the levels. Everything we do is gonna be upside down, because initially this is actually the top of the rack and this is the bottom. When we're done, we're gonna flip it over. So you just put your bins upside down, like that. Then you're gonna take that spacer gap. That's what's gonna provide the space. Boom, just plop it on there, right like that. And now we're gonna get our first shelf. You take your first shelf, you put it on top of the spacer gap, you drill holes on each side, and we just repeat the process. It's just repetitive, nothing changes. So let's build it up. So now we're done with the first level. We hit up each corner with one screw. So one screw here, one screw in the back, one screw there, one screw in the back. Now we're gonna see how everything turned out. Pull out the spacer gap. Now pull these bins out. And now, the moment of truth, let's see if they slide in and out nice and smooth. So far, so good. Everything is feeling nice and smooth so far. Everything is nice and smooth. See how nice and smooth that is? And if you look right up here, there's that tiny space. That's why we use the spacer gap. It provides just a drop of air into the bin and it leaves you enough room where you could slide the bins nice and smooth, but the snake can't escape because it's almost the thickness of maybe two credit cards. Now we got our first level done. We do the same thing on the second level. We put the bins on the next level upside down. Everything 
everything's upside down, you want to make sure it's nice and even, everything's exactly even. Then you put your spacer gap right on top. And then we put the PVC shelf next. So I want to give you guys a quick view of what it looks like from above. If you're standing above the rack, these are the two side walls. That's the base and you want to make sure everything is nice and even, nice and even. And then we put that spacer gap right on top. We put the next shelf on. We screw one, two, three, four. Then we pull the bins out, make sure they fit and pull in and out smoothly. And we start building the next level. It's simple as that. All right, so we got our next level, level number two. Take that nice sheet of PVC, put it right on top. Just make sure each corner is flush. So now those screws go in the PVC like butter. When you have a good screw, it goes right in. So this is the second level. Do the same thing. Remove that spacer gap. And we're gonna do the test, make sure the bend's going nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. All right guys, so we already got seven levels built. You can see it's just the exact same thing over and over and over again. Anybody could do it, it's super easy. The whole thing is just getting the measurement of the bins you want, how many bins you want per shelf, do your measurements. Once you get the cuts of PVC or wood, it's so simple. You can see how easy it is. It just goes up. I could do this in about 25 to 30 minutes if I wasn't recording. With recording, it might take about an hour because I gotta keep stopping, moving the camera and stuff, but these are the easiest things to build. So I wanna give you guys a little close up view of how we're doing each level. We're putting the bin with the spacer gap and then we're putting the PVC shelf on top. We're looking right here, see it could go crooked. You wanna make sure it's exactly flush. Put your finger there, make sure it's perfect. Then just give it a little bit of pressure, line up the screw.
make sure the screw is flush, touch the bottom and top. Sometimes the screw could go in a downward and it'll come out the end. Just make sure it's perfect. And that's pretty much how we're doing every level. Simple as that. All right, so this would have been the bottom layer, which we're not using for bins. It was gonna be capped off right here. It was just gonna be for storage. But I said, you know what? I don't need no more storage. I could put the next level right there. Like this right here. So instead of it being like this, cause this was gonna be the bottom, you see it wouldn't have been able to fit that bin. We're going to drop it right there. Now we got a 13th level and this will be on the floor. So it'll be a little, a little bit off the ground. So now I'm gonna apply two strips of heat tape. We live in South Florida. Average temperature in our house is around 78 degrees with a low of 76, with the exception of the few winter days. If I lived up north, I definitely do four strips or do belly heat. Now the backing isn't perfectly fitting, but I could use those little sides to grab when I reposition the rack and the heat spread, so it'll be perfectly fine. Man, look at that beautiful rack behind me. It came out perfectly. Couldn't have asked for more. I'm glad you guys are here to hang out with me and watch me build this. Now this bin, I mean this rack could hold, it was supposed to hold 60 hatchling FB5s or V15 bins, but because I added that extra level, it could hold 65 V15s. That's a lot of capacity. Now. I could get an ARS rack, which will hold about this, but I would have to spend about $1,500 more minimum for that rack, but it's a beautiful rack. I will eventually get an ARS rack. It's like the Mercedes of uh, racks. This is more like a Honda Civic, but it's beautiful. It serves the purpose, and I'm really excited about it. This rack right here, if you want to get a professional PVC rack, you, you won't find any that hold this many bins. And if you do, it's gonna be way over $1,000. Usually you'll see them that only hold about 18, 18 um, V15s. So this is a custom build and I'm glad you guys were here to see how easy it is. I hope you guys learn and start building these racks because they're so easy. Now next week, we're gonna get our Freedom Breeder bins in the mail. I'm gonna do an unboxing, then we're gonna fill up the rack put some snakes, I got a lot of snakes in quarantine in actual lidded bins on the floor, so I gotta get them in this rack. It's gonna be amazing. I'm glad you guys were here with me to build it. So until next time, I'll catch you in the next one. So I just want to give a big shout out to Go Chaos Gamer who drew this amazing artwork of me and I just feel so blessed that I have viewers that are so loyal to the channel and I want to say thank you.